I've been researching medicinal mushrooms for 35 years. And I'll tell you for cancer and chronic infections like chronic fatigue syndrome and long COVID, one of the best approaches is medicinal mushrooms. So today we're gonna to be discussing shiitake, reishi, and turkey tail. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this, and be sure to hit the alert button to be notified of new videos each week. So the first one I wanna talk about is shiitake mushroom. Now I'm sure everybody knows about that. And shiitake is found in grocery stores, health food stores, and gourmet markets. And it, it really brings out the flavor in vegetable dishes and stews and soups. And although shiitake does have immune potentiating activity and may have some anti-cancer activity, a large dosage is needed. And that's why in, in uh, Japan and Asia, uh, typically shiitake is taken as a food or as an injectable. So in China and Japan, they sell or they have available injectable shiitake, it's called lentinin. And lentinin is one of the active constituents in shiitake. So it's really important to think about that, that uh, shiitake is very nutritious. It contains fiber, protein, niacin, vitamin B5, zinc. It even contains vitamin D. So shiitake is a great food ingredient. I, I, you will find supplements or, or uh, tablets and capsules of shiitake or shiitake in 10, herb, uh, 10 mushroom combination. It's not a good use of shiitake. Why? You need a lot of it. So my take home message today is enjoy shiitake, enjoy it in foods. Um, what I've recommended in the clinic to get some of the antiviral and immune potentiating activity out of reishi uh, I mean, out of shiitake, excuse me, is what we do is we have a decoction. We take our uh, shiitake mushrooms, boil it as a tea or simmer as a tea for about 30 minutes and drink that down. And then you can take the uh, mushrooms that you've just used for the tea or decoction and add it to your soups or stews. So that's what I like to do. And that has some medicinal ability. But I don't, don't recommend these, uh, the idea of a supplement that contains shiitake, uh, either as the principal ingredient or as a number of ingredients. So the next one I want to talk about is my good friend, Rishi. Now, Rishi is also known as Ganoderma. It's also known as Lingzhi, which is a Chinese name. And it's also been known as the mushroom of immortality. And so what, one of the things that's fascinating about Rishi mushrooms is that uh, it, they've been used for hundreds of years, but it's only been recent that they've found their way into the Chinese pharmacopoeia. Now, why is that? It's been used for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Why shouldn't it be in the Chinese pharmacopoeia? Because it was reserved for the emperors. So the common people were not allowed to have reishi mushroom. It was considered the premier tonic for only reserved for the emperors. And what they're getting at and what they may be getting at is that reishi is good for so many things. It has anti-cancer, anti-aging, and immune enhancing properties as well. And that's why we've been using this in research, uh, research studies uh, since the 1980s. We've used it in research studies for mostly for chronic fatigue, HIV, although other groups are using reishi for uh, cancer. And um, one of the main uh, cancer drugs in Japan is actually an extract of reishi mushroom. It's called PSK. It is very expensive extract, but it has been found to prolong the life of cancer patients. So because of the Japanese research and maybe the Chinese research also, uh, uh, reishi is just so widely used and so widely respected throughout uh, throughout Asia. So let's look at some of the special benefits. So it has been known as an immune uh, modifier. It seems to improve the white blood cell count. So they basically help the bodies respond to fighting off cancer and infections as well. So again, we use reishi mushroom in combination with other herbs for 
cancer patients, long COVID patients, chronic fatigue syndrome patients, and other chronic viral infections. But it has even more use than that. So where I like to use Rishi particularly is for fatigue. So let's say you have somebody who's just a stressed out executive, for instance. They can benefit with Rishi and other herbs tailored to their constitution. But let's say somebody's undergoing cancer therapy, like chemotherapy or radiation therapy. Rishi can help play a role, especially with other herbs, to help pick up the energy, pick up the white blood cell counts, because white blood cell counts become depressed due to cancer therapies. So we know that Rishi can uh, actually kill cancer cells, but that's in the test tube, right? There's not a lot of studies. There are some studies using Rishi by itself for cancer. And those studies are not done in the United States. They're all done in China and Japan. But what I'm giving you the idea is what I think is so, what there is clinical evidence about is Rishi in conjunction with Western therapies like chemotherapy and, um, and, and radiation therapy, and maybe with certain uh, antiviral drugs that are used in viral infections as well. So we use Rishi mushroom in chronic viral infections um, and uh, the emperors used it, uh, reishi mushroom, for longevity. But what I like, another use of uh, uh, reishi mushroom is brain health. So uh, it appears that reishi is neuroprotective. And so that's really good. Um, also, it seems that uh, heart disease um, is lessened by, uh, by reishi mushroom. Now, uh, reishi then is good for the liver. And uh, so it's used in detoxification. And in China, uh, one of the problems that they've had uh, over the last uh, 30, 40 years is chronic hepatitis B infection. And so um, they don't have as much chronic uh, hepatitis C infection in the United States. But they have chronic B hep uh, hepatitis B infection. And reishi is one of the things with other herbs that really helps people recover from chronic hepatitis B infection. Now in the United States, uh, uh, hepatitis C is more common. And so again, particularly for hepatitis patients that have frequent infections, that feel run down, feel tired, reishi is, is just a great herb to consider. And so now I wanna talk to you, maybe I'll just go over some of the benefits of reishi because I've talked about so many of the benefits. So number one, reishi uh, benefits the immune system. Number two, it has anti-cancer properties. And number three, it can fight fatigue and depression. And number four, it can help people with heart and liver diseases. So let's talk about, well, how do we take uh, reishi mushroom? So the best way to take reishi mushroom, in my opinion, is using very high quality powdered extracts. And so what they're able to do in the lab is take mushroom whole mushroom fruiting bodies and boil them for a long period of time or simmer them for a long period of time in state-of-the-art technology. And then they can spray the, uh, the reishi concentrate on a medium and, uh, and then they can produce uh, powder or capsules that are very concentrated. And typically, uh, when I was in practice, I used a concentrate that was 20 to one. So it took 20 pounds of reishi concentrate or, or, or 20 pounds of reishi mushrooms to produce one pound of reishi concentrate. Uh, the other thing that I would strongly recommend is to use reishi with other herbs and a formula with other herbs. The best way to use reishi is to see a practitioner who has experience using it and finding out how they use it and what, what do they combine it with. And that's because in my own experience, uh, good quality reishi can be a little bit difficult to digest. That's one thing. And then a very small number of people have an allergic reaction to reishi. So this is some of the reasons that I recommend that you use reishi under professional supervision, that you use combinations of reishi, and that you use it in a concentrated powder. Now, the final take-home message about reishi is avoid mycelium. So fruiting bodies, when we go to the health food store, grocery store, and we have button mushrooms, you know, mushrooms in the mushroom section of the grocery store, those are fruiting bodies. Mycelium is basically the underground network of mushrooms. It's pre 
Uh, these are pre-fruiting bodies. Many companies use the mycelium in mushrooms, including reishi and turkey tail and the other mushrooms, shiitake. They just do not have the activity of the fruiting bodies. And I found that in my clinic, the steer has found that true in their clinic. They actually did a, a study using uh, reishi mycelium, got no results, switched to concentrated reishi extract in powder form, received results. So very important to use uh, reishi from a good provider and use it appropriately because it's a, it's a wonderful uh, potentiator for all sorts of conditions. Okay, the last one I wanna talk about is turkey tail. And turkey tail is also known as Coriolis versicolor or Tramides versicolor, versicolor. And do you know why it's called turkey tail? Because it looks like the tail of a turkey. And um, I have only been aware of turkey tail for about 20 years. It grows widely in the United States. Of course, it also grows in Japan and uh, China. And this also uh, is used for its immune system benefits. Uh, in Japan, it also has wide uses of, uh, of, of use as an extract. And extracts of turkey tail are used in capsule and tablet form. And then people undergoing chemo and radiation therapy are taking uh, turkey tail as an adjunct. So um, now what I found out about about a year or two ago, uh, one of the UC colleges, so there is about 12 UC uh, University of California campuses. And I think it was one in Southern California where they're actually using turkey tail uh, on, long, uh, on COVID. They're studying turkey tail to see in, in, in patients to see if turkey tail has a, a, a inhibiting factor or helps people with COVID-19 recover. So, uh, so the use of uh, turkey tail in viral conditions, as far as I know, is rather new, but the use as a cancer adjunct is, is, has been around for a long time. So we talked about shiitake and how it's really best as a food therapy. We talked about uh, reishi and how it's best uh, used under professional supervision and uh, using a concentrated extracted uh, powder, uh, either in capsule or in powder form, is the best way to take reishi. Now, turkey tail, I would suggest you either make a tea, it doesn't taste bad, or you uh, use a concentrated extract. So if you use a concentrated extract, you want to make sure that there's a lot of polysaccharides. So many of the companies are assaying their turkey tail extracts for, uh, for uh, polysaccharide uh, activity. And uh, the one I used to use had at least 25% polysaccharide activity in the turkey tail um, tablets that I used to recommend to my patients. So um, now if you do make a tea, uh, it's very similar to Ganoderma, where you want to take the fruiting bodies and you want to uh, boil it a long time. Actually, you want to bring it to a boil and then simmer it for many hours. Um, I recommend uh, boiling uh, uh, turkey tail mushroom for at least two hours, maybe even four hours, uh, and do two different boilings. You boil for two hours, drain it off, and then boil for another two hours. I, I, I really boil a lot of the mushrooms for a long time. I think that that's the way to go or to take a concentrated powdered extract. Um, and then the bad news is I don't recommend any kind of liquid extracts of medicinal mushrooms. So whether it's shiitake or reishi or turkey tail, I think it's best to use uh, either teas, as I've mentioned, or the concentrated powders, either in powder form or in uh, capsule form. The tincture is just, you just don't get enough dosage of the medicinal mushrooms to get an effect. Recently, I spoke to Ian at Far West Fungi in the Ferry Building in San Francisco. Here's what he had to say about these mushrooms. So this is our shiitake mini farm. And this is exactly how we grow uh, shiitakes at our farm. Uh, we produce about 3,300 blocks every day that go into production. And each one of these farms produces about a pound and a half of mushrooms to two pounds of mushrooms off of one of these blocks. And what the block is itself is actually red oak sawdust and rice bran uh, and a whole lot of water. So uh, we 
fi we have cultures of the shiitake that we have in our labs. We take a little of that and we introduce it to each one of these blocks that's been sterilized in our lab. And uh, then we seal the bag that it comes in um, and we put it into incubation for about 14 weeks. And in that time, the mycelium runs through and then once the mushroom realizes or the fungus realizes that it doesn't have any more space to grow, um, it decides I have to reproduce to find another place to hopefully grow on. And so what you see here are the shiitake mushrooms, which is the fruiting body of the mycelium. Um, and this takes about one week for the, the mushrooms to fruit off the block. Then we harvest these guys off and then they go directly to the sale. So this is the shiitake mushroom. Um, it is uh, really thick and dense, uh, very good high source of protein. Um, and uh, although medicinal, I think more people know this as like a culinary and one of the more consumed mushrooms, uh, exotic mushrooms in the US. Uh, as far as recipes on this, the, the other wonderful thing about these guys is you, know, you can just pull one of these off here. I usually uh, trim the stem on it. Um, but you can chop it up and use that as well. There's actually more fiber in the stem, so it's really good to consume that, even though most people discard it. And then um, you can dice it or slice it, saute it with a little olive oil, maybe some fresh herbs, salt and pepper, and uh, have it as a side dish. Uh, if they're larger ones, sometimes I throw them on the barbecue and uh, treat it like a piece of meat. Uh, the next mushroom that I have here is the, uh, the reishi variety. So we're one of the few farms in uh, the US that actually grows reishi. Actually, it's a little bit easier to find them now, but we, we started this program about 10 years ago. Um, the reishi itself is very firm and dense. We only maybe carry it uh, fresh at our, at our uh, stores about eight times out of the year because usually it's just dried and turned into a tea. Because if you were to chew on this or or um, try to consume it, it would be more bark-like uh, or fibrous, almost like sawdust. It's grown on the same material as all of our other mushrooms, red oak sawdust and rice bran, but you can see that it's very absorbent um, and it like really pulls the nutrients out. It's probably why it is actually so beneficial for you uh, in general. Um, but uh, uh, these guys are wonderful in teas. They're, they're bitter, they're sharp, they're really probably not the best to, to consume on a culinary level. But when you break this down, add something a little bit sweeter like rooibos, um, vanilla or cacao, something like that. You can actually get a very nice mellow tea that can be an easy uh, replacement for coffee um, or like a really dark tea. Um, and so reishi. And then the, the final one that I have here is actually the... Uh, the turkey tail. Now turkey tail we do grow, but I tend to want to find these guys out in the woods. So these guys here, uh, turkey tail, uh, very, very firm as well. One that I will just chew on. Um, and you can kind of see from that perspective of it actually looking like more like a turkey's tail, um, used as a medicinal quite a bit uh, to boost the immune system. Uh, definitely a lot of bronchial, uh, fantastic mushroom just to really consume. Again, you're not going to cook with these. Teas and tinctures are probably the best way to consume the turkey tail. This concludes our video on medicinal mushrooms, shiitake, reishi, and turkey tail. And I hope you'll let us know what you think. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this, and be sure to hit the alert button to be notified of new videos each week.